As I have shown in the last episode, this year I'm experimenting with different ways to grow onions. I'm trying to push it to see how well they do in varying conditions, interplanted amongst other crops. I even had decided to plant them in marginal land, right on the edge, close to the road. Would I be able to increase food output up to the edge of my property? The purpose of planting it here is to actually use up this space in the wisest way possible because it's actually a very sunny spot and it goes to waste. But one thing I do need to keep in mind is to actually keep these lower branches of the vines clipped so as to maximize the sun exposure on the plants and also mulch heavily so I don't have to water as much and suppress the weeds also. Another thing is that I've noticed that the basil that I had already planted as an experiment is really liking this spot, so it really makes sense for that. It clearly was the perfect microclimate for growing basil. I've noticed that basil loves to be near heat sinks like stones and concrete. Being next to the road was perfect for it. The soil also is incredibly, incredibly soft. It used to be very compacted, I remember clearly. It just so happens that I piled up lots of organic material like um, wood chips and also weeds that would grow here. I would just chop and drop and now I can even dig it with my hands. That's how soft it is. This patch of land had surely been compacted by machinery in years past as the road had been serviced. At first it looked more like the clay subsoil that is common in this area. The grapevines had loved this location, and by chopping and dropping their lower leaves, I was hastening the cycle of soil building. I certainly would be able to get something out of this narrow piece of land. Grapes and basil for sure. Admittedly, expecting onions from here also was a bit too optimistic. However, something else that is edible had decided to grow here all by its own. It's just astonishing the growth here. This scale looks absolutely beautiful, and it's ripe for harvesting, although I'm almost using it as an early detection site of um, groundhogs because I'll see if the groundhogs are coming towards my garden if they attack this first because this is one of their favorite foods. But I can't just leave it here, I'll have to harvest it. While I was happy with all the promising growth happening all around the garden, the development of the onions so far bothered me a bit. Unlike in the previous years, when I started onions and leeks indoors, this year I had waited a bit, letting them grow in the cups, but outside. I was trying to grow my starts outdoors, to see if I could be just as successful without having my house filled with plant trays in early spring under artificial light. Because of that, I had planted them almost a month and a half later than when I usually do, so they seemed less developed by now in June than usual. That made me want to look deeper into the cultivation of onions. I knew I would need to provide them as much sunlight now to give them a chance to develop faster. So I went about chopping and dropping the lower leaves of the grapevine to increase solar exposure to them and mulch them at the same time. I knew that bulb development had a lot to do with day length and that certain onion varieties do better in certain areas according to latitude. I remember reading that Maryland was right in the area where both short day and long day onions could potentially be grown. So I took that for granted and never looked much deeper than that. But something told me I needed to look into it more, that perhaps my previous experience growing onions had worked only because I planted them very early in the year. Coming up in the next block, was I about to have a rude awakening concerning my onion experiments? You will find out right after this commercial. If you enjoy the videos and would like to support the channel, you can purchase an original painting or drawing in my Etsy shop, or become a patron in my Patreon. Hope is the last thing to die, so I follow the proverb and continue planting onions even as July rolled in. I had a bunch of leeks and onions that I never got to plant still waiting in the pots and it's probably not going to amount to much but since I had the space here open from all the spinach that bolted and really were a failure even though I got more than 
what I've had in previous experiences. I'm gonna plant it here. The thing is, the groundhog has been ravishing this area, unrelenting, and it ate all the flower stalks that the that the spinach put out. So I'm gonna plant something it doesn't like. Hopefully, I'll get a crop out of it. I'm sure maybe the leeks will grow. Other than that, I don't know. It's good, good. Um, idea to just let the earth rest a little bit with a less intensive crop. Now, is groundhog even ate the zinnia. When it gets to eat zinnias, that means it's really hungry. These onions and leeks starts had seen better days. That was an understatement. I had clearly raised too many seedlings from my relatively small growing space, and while I tried to cram in as much as possible, as I usually do, I still had a tray full of onions and leeks left. Up until now and this year, most of the other experimental plantings of onions I had made had failed and I started to see a pattern for their demise. After planting them, they looked good for some weeks and even started to grow well but soon they happened to be shaded out by larger plants next door. My tendency to cram plants in was denying the onions a chance to develop properly. They needed enough direct sunlight to be able to photosynthesize enough sugars to store them in their bulbs. That clearly was an issue, but something else was causing them to fail and it had everything to do with timing. I researched more and something I already knew about superficially started to crystallize as essential as the facts pile up. Onions are thermophotosensitive, that means that bulbing and flowering are dictated by temperature and light. There are both long day and short day onions. I had not paid much attention to this fact previously as I should have. Long day onions start bulbing when day length exceeds 14 to 16 hours. Short day onions will bulb when day length is 10 to 12 hours. There are also intermediate ones that bulb from 12 to 14 hours. Short day onions grow best in the southern states of the US or closer to the equator. Long day onions will only bulb north of Washington DC. Timing is critical, therefore it is not something to be experimented with. I happen to plant long day varieties. I had success in the past precisely because I grew them very early indoors, planting them out as soon as I could. Our days become longer than 14 hours around May. That means that onion plants must be well established by then. They need to have a well developed root system and lush leaves to be able to produce a proper sized bulb by then. I had started them around April. That was not nearly enough time for them to grow enough to bulb by May or June. For those in the southern states, it is impossible to grow long day onions as they will never bulb since day length closer to the equator never gets long enough. For them, short day onions planted during winter are a must. As fall approached, I realized how much of a failure this had been, all because of a few simple mistakes. My main mistake or crop failure this year was with the onions. They really didn't grow, even here the ones that were in the front, which were supposed to get more light, but with all this growth, they just didn't. I think I planted them too, too late in the season, and they're um, daylight sensitive, so doesn't work. Now I just have some tiny onions here, but a lot of basil. I'm okay though, basil is way more expensive in the grocery store than onions. I'll live with it. It's a good thing I always plant a lot of things, since some things will always do spectacularly well even as other things fail. This tiny onion is a testament to that. It was simply engulfed by basil in a cucumber vine. Why do I even bother sharing with you my failures? Surely a lot of YouTube gardeners prefer not to share when things go awry. Of course we all want to see success in abundance, but there is value to showing when things do not go as planned. We learn. This year I've decided to share even more with you when things fail miserably for me. Hopefully you will learn from my mistakes. Of course, I always enjoy abundance in my garden because I plant a lot and try to learn from past failures. By showcasing my failures, it hopefully encourages less experienced gardeners to not give up when things go wrong.
that it is a natural part of the process. I also like to experiment, and that opens up the chance to failure. But it is by pushing the boundaries that we sometimes stumble upon novel ways of succeeding. Gardening, just like life, is a lot about trial and error. If we are open to learning, we will succeed.